Yeah, you Apple's very important to spread the rumor that Verizon and ATT have decided they don't like the phone. And this is very easy because the people who write about Apple want that story. Stop the record and rewind that. And you can claim that it's credible because you spoke to someone at Apple because Apple isn't and it doesn't. Right, they're not going to comment. Not we, all of us, are being lied to, tricked, deceived, manipulated, bamboozled. Yes, all the time. Pretty much any time we head into Apple event season or approach an Apple earnings report, we just get hit with this hailstorm of hot leaks about the iPhone or iPad or Apple Watch or whatever being doomed, having a shortage of a critical component, a delay in some high profile feature or a problem in the supply chain or sales that's gonna result in Apple lowering orders or making way less money than predicted. And I'm not even talking about on Twitter or on YouTube, I'm talking about everything from the industry rags to the national papers of record and sometimes, sure, sometimes these reports are authentic and accurate, but other times they are just complete and utter bullshit, as the good place would have me say. So, why? I'm Renee Ritchie, welcome back to the channel. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring, let's do this. I will 100% absolutely get into whether or not I believe any of the most recent rumors about Apple event delays in a scorching hot minute. But first I wanna show you why we need to take all of these rumors with just an Apple Park sized grain of salt. And I don't want you to have to take my word for it either. Even though I consider my word to be my bond, there is nothing, nothing I hate worse than being wrong on the internet. And I would literally shut this channel down before ever knowingly passing on bad information to you. But I want you to hear this from the source. So I'm gonna show you a short set of video clips and I'm gonna just fair use critique and review the crap out of them so that you can see where they're coming from and what, if any, value you should ascribe to them. Welcome to Wall Street Confidential. I'm Aaron Task, joined again by Jim Kramer. Jim, welcome. Good to see you. Yes, this is a very old video but a cataclysmically insightful one. So just stick with me here. And I could get a stock like RIM for maybe, that might cost me 15, 20 million, Annie, to knock RIM down. RIM, Research in Motion, the makers of BlackBerry were still kings of the world, but Apple was about to flip the table on the whole entire industry with the iPhone. And that part coming up is just brain breaking. But it would be fabulous because it would beleaguer all the moron longs who are also keen on Research in Motion. Moron longs. Real people long on a stock, which means buying it and holding it for a long-term investment, for life savings or retirement. Sometimes, sure, big institutions, but also sometimes just regular people like you and me who maybe don't know all the ways markets can be manipulated or the ways the game is rigged, but calling them morons just makes it easier to rationalize feeding off of them, right? People talking about it as if there's something wrong with RIM. Then you call the journal and you get the Bozo report on research in motion. Bozo, another dehumanization and a means to an end. Because while papers like the Wall Street Journal have literal icons of the industry like Walt Mossberg and Joanna Stern as columnists, for beat reporters, Sometimes those don't have anywhere nearly the experience or industry insight, much less the knowledge of these companies, specific companies. And maybe it's because they just moved over from healthcare or the auto industry beat and all they know from Apple is the logo, but that also if they wanna get anywhere, they need to be able to help sell papers. If it bleeds, it leads, especially in our industry, if it bleeds six colors. Then you would call the journal and you get the Bozo report on Research in Motion and you would feed that there's a Palm's got a killer it's gonna give away. These are all the things you must do on a day like today. And if you're not doing it, maybe you shouldn't be in the game. And we, all of us as readers, we all suffer from the Gell-Mann amnesia effect, which means we can read an article on a subject that we know really, really well and easily point out any and all factual errors by a reporter who doesn't know that topic, that subject anywhere nearly as well. But then we can go on and read another article immediately thereafter on a subject we don't know very well and we just assume it's all correct. We don't realize it almost certainly contains just as many factual errors as the previous article we read. It's not like if a friend of ours just kept repeatedly getting things wrong because then we'd factor that into everything they told us but we don't do that here. We literally suffer from instant amnesia and it opens us up to exactly these kinds of manipulations. Another stock that a lot of people are focused on right now seems to be Apple. Yeah, you Apple's very important to spread the rumor. Now this was back when everyone was waiting. The entire industry was waiting 
for Steve Jobs to put sneaker to stage and announce the original iPhone. Spread the rumor that both uh, Verizon and ATT have decided they don't like the phone. It's also you want to spread the rumor that it's not going to be ready for Macworld. So just keep the implications of all of that in mind for a minute. And this is very easy because the people who write about Apple want that story. So the idea here is that Apple media like nothing more than stories saying Apple is doomed. And you can claim that it's credible because you spoke to someone at Apple because Apple isn't in it doesn't- Right, they're not gonna comment. Not and you can basically make up any Apple is doomed story that you want for them to publish because Apple is so secretive, it'll be impossible to fact check those stories and they'll still run with them because they want the schadenfreude, the views, both, which is not completely true, of course, there are a lot of deeply ethical Apple reporters out there who can smell this stuff just a garbage dump or three away. But there are also people who think, who really think that cynicism is intelligence, that negativity is honesty, that performative faux tough person theater and rage bait is the best way to grow their personal brand and clout. And that keeping an audience in perpetual fear, anxiety, and distrust is the best way to extract value and leverage from that audience. It is absolutely beyond gross, but it's also sadly incredibly effective. There is not a doubt in my mind that if I did that, I'd have 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times as many followers and subscribers. I just couldn't live with myself. Even if ironically, giving you what I understand to be the absolute best quality information I can with all the nuance and complexity and facets that all of these major stories require, involve, gets me just dunked on and roasted by the same people who buy into or just sell all of this fake stuff. Right, so it's really an ideal short. If I were a short Apple, I would be working very hard today to get that. So one of the ways to make money on the stock market is to buy low and sell high. You buy a certain amount of a stock, you wait maybe a long period of time, long, and then you sell it when the value has gone up and you make the difference. But the other way is to short, uh, what's called shorting, and that means you sell high and buy low, the opposite, in the reverse chronological order. And the way you would do that is you pick up the phone, you call six trading desks, and you say, listen, I just got off the phone with my contact at Verizon, and he has already said, we're a lucky G house. So you get the money for the value that it is now, but you only have to pay what the value is in the future, the presumably much lower value in the future. And while that might be just because you think it's gonna go down, it also creates this whole market where people are incentivized to try to push the price of that stock down. Uh, we're a Samsung house, we, we, we're a Motorola house. There's no room for Apple. They want too much that we're not gonna let them in. And you know, I think that's a very effective way to keep a stock down. Right. So the goal from all of this isn't to inform investors, isn't to help media inform readers, but to push the stock down. What's important when you're in that hedge fund mode is to not do anything remotely truthful. So here just, saying the quiet part out loud, the part that everyone indoor baseball knows, but everyone outdoor baseball is usually never told. You can't take any chances. You can't have the market up any more than it is if you're up six. So right. what would you do if you're in that situation and you feel like you're desperate is that you would do these actions? I covered Apple for mobile nations, for iMor for 12 years. And in that time, I can't even count how many Apple is doomed, iPhone is delayed, components are short, orders are down, and other articles I saw pushed out through industry rags and papers of record, sometimes in the middle of the night, sometimes on weekends, sometimes without bylines, sometimes even disappearing later after the stock moved. And nine times out of 10, maybe more, maybe way more, they were based on a single data point that meant nothing in the broader context of Apple's supply chain or logistic systems. The way that the market really works is to hit the brokerage houses with a series of orders that can push it down, then leak it to the press. And it certainly got just a ton of attention, a ton of clicks, a ton of link backs, a ton of reblogs, but it manipulated a lot of markets and disinformed a lot of people hurt a lot of investors, not hedge funds, real human investors. And, and then you have a kind of a vicious cycle down. Right. And it's a pretty good game. And I hate it. I especially hate it because it plays into the whole fake news con game that these same market manipulators in office and in private sector use to dismiss actual reporting and avoid any and all forms of accountability all the time. What role in Nokia have to get in a room and just fix price? They've been reluctant to do that because of the various justice departments and because they and actually- it's illegal, right, yeah. When news, real news, is supposed to inform and empower to literally defend and serve the interests of the people because with great audience doesn't come great 
great clout or great entitlement or opportunity. With great audience comes great responsibility. And I will just keep saying that and keep fighting for that constantly, often to my own detriment, because the same goes from companies as well, both PR and sources, whether they're giving you a carefully prepared statement or interview on the record, additional information on background, which means you can't quote or attribute it to a specific person, but you can still paraphrase it and attribute it to the company. For example, not to Tim Cook, but to Apple. Even off the record, which is completely different from on background, which means you can't directly report on it or attribute it in any way, but you can use it as a way to confirm or dispute other sources or to protect whistleblowers or whatever. You always have to make sure that they're serving your audience, not themselves and absolutely not at the expense of your audience or your reputation. They can't have a problem to gloss over. They can't have an ax to grind. You have to do your due diligence on any and all of that always. So is there any truth to the current stories about the Apple Watch Series 7 being delayed? And I mean, after 2020 and now rounding out 2020 junior, you can really never say never anymore. Last year, for the first time in almost a decade, we didn't get a new iPhone in September. We got, wait for it, Apple Watch and iPad. And even when we did get two new iPhones in October, we still had to wait until November for the other two. So this year we could easily get iPhone and iPad mini or iPhone and Apple Watch, but with the Apple Watch only shipping in October, maybe November, or none of the above, could just be everything as normal. The point is, be cautiously pessimistic about everything you read, see, and hear. And whether you're an investor or an enthusiast, don't get played by the news. Understand the players and use that knowledge to beat them at their own games. That's what MKBHD, Marquez Brownlee did to win at YouTube. And he's so damn good at it. He's even got a class now teaching his whole entire review making process from how he scripts to how he reads to how he shoots all up on today's sponsor, Skillshare. And it's not just MKBHD. You can learn literally anything from all the best people in the industry because that's the true power of Skillshare. It isn't just one class, even several classes. It's an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators where you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get just totally lost in creativity. It's where I go anytime I wanna learn anything because it's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and there are always new premium classes available. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you, be it illustration or design, photography or video, freelancing or fine arts and crafts, all with real projects to create and the support of real fellow creatives. And because you're watching this video, the first 1,000 of you who click on the link in the description will get a one month trial of Skillshare for free. Just click on that link and you can start exploring your creativity today. Clicking on that link really helps out the channel. And so does hitting up the playlist above for more real talk on what's coming and not coming with the iPhone 13 this year. So just hit it up and I'll see you in the next video.